right, students, we are going back to our volume one math book that we have not used since before Christmas. So go ahead and find it, get it out. Um, I did make copies and put them in a manila folder for you if you can't find your math book. But we are going to be on page 269, working on lesson 13, session one, using multiplication to convert measurements. You also should get out um, this reference sheet. Uh, this is the reference sheet that when we go to take the map test in um, here in a month or so, that you will use this. You can use this for anything. Our book will typically give us a measurement chart for everything that we do, but I want you to get into the habit of using this. It's on the back of your um, decimals, so find this because this is what we're going to be using to get practice with it. Okay. Lydia hears the announcer on a TV show say, we will return in 240 seconds. It takes Lydia five minutes to wash the dishes. Does Lydia have enough time to wash the dishes before the TV show returns? So it says change the number of minutes it takes Lydia to wash the dishes to a number of seconds to find out. So here's seconds. So we want to convert five minutes into seconds. So we're going to convert five minutes into how many seconds? Well, if I get this out right here, I'm going to look at my conversion for time. In one minute, there's 60 seconds. So I'm going to write there, one minute equals 60 seconds, but I have five minutes, so I'm going to do 60 times five to get my answer that goes right there. So 60 times five, five times zero is zero, five times six is 30. If you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can also draw a chart. So one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. And we said that one minute is 60 seconds. So we're going to add 60 every time we move over. So 60 plus 60 is 120, plus 60 is 180, plus 60 is 240. 40 plus 60 is 300 seconds. So our question here is, does Lydia have enough time to wash the dishes before the TV show returns? Well, it's going to take her 300 seconds to wash the dishes, and the show returns in 240 seconds. So no, she does not have enough time. So I showed you two ways here that you can take a look and convert to that measurement. Let's go ahead and go to page 570. Okay. Explain how you found out if Lydia has enough time to wash the dishes. So we did it two different ways and you can choose whichever way you want but we're not going to answer this question um, on paper right here because it's going to depend on which way you use. Look ahead. You already solved a problem about converting units of time from a larger unit to a smaller unit. You can convert, that's an important vocabulary word, from larger to smaller units in other systems of measurement such as length, mass, weight, and liquid volume. Look at the table that shows customary units of weight. So right here it's giving us a table with customary units of weight. It's telling us that one pound has 16 ounces and one ton has 2,000 pounds. You can also find this measurement on here. So you're going to find that under conversions weight. 
one pound is 16 ounces, one ton is 2,000 pounds. Same thing is right here. But again, we're getting into the habit of using this. So, name an object that is about one pound. Think about things that you see around your house that might weigh one pound. It would have 16 ounces. ounces. Um, I like to look at things that have food. So, right here I have a bottle of water, and I have some, like, grape drinking stuff in it. And if I look and find the ounces, it's kind of hard to see, but it says 16.9 fluid ounces. So that's about one pound. Or you might find a can of soup or a can of corn or green beans. So you could put a bottle of water or you could put a can of soup. Those things weigh about one pound. About how many ounces is that object? It's about 16 ounces, because we saw that one pound is 16 ounces, and we saw in our bottle. Suppose you had five pounds of the object you wrote in problem 2A. How could you convert five pounds to a number of ounces? Well, if I want five, and I know there is 16 and one, I'm going to multiply it by 16, like that. Or again, we could use another table, like what we did on the previous page, but we would add 16 each time. So 16 times 5, 5 times 6 is 30, 5 times 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8. So it would equal about 80 ounces. Think about the problem with Lydia and the dishes. Do you use the same operation to convert from minutes to seconds as you use to convert from pounds to ounces? So on the previous page, we did minutes to seconds, and on this page, we did pounds to ounces. But in both cases, we multiplied or can use a table. So yes, um, both of them are converting units. When you convert from a larger unit, such as pounds or minutes, to a smaller unit, such as ounces or seconds, why do you use multiplication? Well, when you go from larger to small it, there are more smaller units that make up the larger unit. So you must multiply. Okay. So let's take a look at our next page on 271. And our vocabulary word that we're working on in math this week is convert measurements. So in our own words, um, we would say that we are going to, to change from one measurement to another, like minutes to seconds. Okay, um, a picture of it, we could use a table to graph it. So, three minutes equals 180 seconds. Um, another example would be one pound equals 16 ounces. 
So 5 pounds equals 5 times 16, which is 80 ounces. Something that is not an example is that you cannot convert minutes to pounds. Let me show you on this. Minutes are down here in this section. So the only things that you can convert are things in this section with each other. Pounds are up here. So they have to stay in this section. Okay? You cannot convert minutes with pounds because they don't cross over with each other. Okay? I'm going to show you one more way to do this one right here. Some people, when they draw this graph, instead of doing one minute, two minutes, three minutes, they do one minute, one minute, one minute, 60, 60, 60, and then they do repeated addition, or they do 60 times 3. It's going to get you the same answer. It's just another way to do that model right there, um, and some of you may prefer that way. Okay, number two. How does the table at the right show converting from larger to smaller units of measure? Okay, we are going to use this one in this case because um, it's talking specifically about this one. So, a pound is larger than an ounce. Okay, one pound is bigger than one ounce because it takes 16 ounces to make one pound. It also shows us that a ton is bigger than a pound because it takes 2,000 pounds to make one ton. So you can convert between those measurements. Right, let's take a look at 272. Jane misses an exercise class. She wants to know if she has enough time to do her errands before the next exercise class. The next class starts in 195 minutes. It takes Jane three hours to do her errands. Does Jane have enough time to do her errands before the next class starts? Okay, so it gives us a hint here. Change the number of hours it takes Jane to do her errands to the number of minutes to find out. So we want to take three hours and see how many minutes that equals. So I'm going to make a chart here. So one hour, two hours, three hours, okay? I know from looking at this or also looking here, one hour has 60 minutes. So my one hour box is going to get a 60. And each time I move over a box, I'm going to add 60. So, if I do that three times, which is the same thing as doing three times 60, I'm going to get 180 minutes. So, now we have to go back to our question. Does Jane have enough time to do her errands before the next class starts? Well, it's going to take her 180 minutes to do her errands, and the next class starts 195 minutes. So... Yes, Jane has enough time. And we don't need to show our work here because we already showed it up here. So that's it for this lesson. I'll see you back for the next one.